smart prosecutors who are women. I think they make just Jim Dandy fine elected officials. Uh, I know Teresa has gained the trust, respect, and support of people who live in Cass County because of the way she has run her office. Uh, you know, without fear or favor, either of those, she has done the right thing in terms of prosecuting crime in this county. She has stood up for the values that are important to that congressional district, whether it's our culture that knows it's important that we can have our guns and have our hunting, to a culture that violence against women is unacceptable, to a culture that the farm bill is pretty darn important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all of those things are important to the congressional district that she's running to represent. And she's running against someone who is very similar to the three people I'm running against. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a person who sees the far, far, far edge of the Republican Party, all the way to the right wing extreme of the Republican Party, as a comfortable place to be. Now, I know this congressional district, all the way from Boone County to Cass County. I know this state, all the way from north to south, east to west, and everything in between. And I'll tell you one thing that they don't want. They don't want my way or the highway. They want somebody who knows it's important to build highways. They don't want people who think compromise is the problem. They want people who think compromise is cool. Uh, they want people who can work across the aisle and be reasonable, use common sense, be a moderate, be independent, if necessary, from their party, from the president, from anyone, if it's the right thing to do for their state or for their district. And so I'm sorry I missed her, but I sure hope that we all work really hard for her while we're working really hard to hold on to Harry Truman's Senate seat at the same time. Right. Uh, it's very important. Now, I, I haven't had a chance to check uh, Vicki Hartzler's record, but I know the positions of my three opponents pretty well, and they're three of a kind, one of the same. And I want you to leave here knowing three things about it that everyone needs to know in this county. First, they all three want to privatize Medicare. Now, does everybody understand what that means? Mm -hmm. That means seniors would have to go on the private market and buy health insurance. And then wrestle insurance companies to get their health care bills paid. Or wrestle insurance companies to see if it's okay to go to a certain doctor. Or wrestle insurance companies to see if it's okay to get a certain treatment. That's not what happens now with Medicare. It's reliable. It's secure. You know it's there. It's predictable. You don't have to worry that you're going to get left with some bill because there's some kind of claims agent somewhere that's trying to make sure they don't pay the bill. So really the notion that we're going to give seniors some money to go shop for private insurance, that's what they're for in the Ryan bill. And by the way, Vicki Hartzler will vote for it. Mm -hmm. that, that you would do that to seniors in this country, uh, that's not what Missourians want. They don't want to privatize Medicare. Number two, they want to privatize Social Security. In other words, take the word security out of the phrase. Now, I, you know, they, it sounds kind of okay when they talk about it. Well, let somebody take their money instead of giving it to the Social Security Trust Fund. Let them invest it where they want. Well, let's assume that we do that. Let's assume somebody invests that all in Wall Street. Some stock. And what happens when they lose it all? Are, are we done with them? Do we have a special place we put them where they can be fed by the state or cared for by the state? Or do we just let them become homeless and not have food? I mean, people live on Social Security checks. I think these people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. That there are thousands of Missourians that are living just on Social Security. Yes. And if they made a mistake and invested it in the wrong place, um, then we would be back to what we had before we had Social Security. And that is seniors living in extreme poverty and us trying to struggle with how to deal with that. The third thing, and this is the whipped cream and the cherry on top, is in fact, they want to get rid of federal involvement in student loans. They want private companies to do all the student loans, private banks, no more federal government. Now, I don't know about you all, but I've had three 17-year-olds. I wouldn't loan any of them money. <laughs> <laughs> Not a one of them. Not a one of them. Uh, I don't know how many high school graduates can walk into a bank and have no credit history, no assets, and say, hey, give me 
$20,000 to go to college, and by the way, my parents can't afford to sign for the loan, because if they could, they'd be sending me to college. So what will happen to that young man or that young woman? They're going to say no. They're going to say, we don't have a college loan for you. And so then what would we end up with? Who would be going to college? Just the rich kids. Just the rich kids. And how does that change America? How does that change our country significantly? We are no longer the envy of the world if that happens. Because what we've been able to do in this country is it doesn't matter whether your parents were janitors or your parents were PhDs. You can grab that first rung of the ladder and, and get a, a loan to go to school and pay it back when you get out and find a new life and a new opportunity through higher education. That's defined us as a nation. It's made us the envy of the world. And they want to go to a system where just rich kids go to college. That's how out of touch these folks are. They are so anxious to shut down every part of the federal government that they don't even think it through. They're so reactionary about it. And that's why this election is so important. Um, it, is, uh, it is really important that we find a lot of volunteers in this effort. Um, we're opening offices all over. I said we're not going to do this with just big money on television, although can you tell they are? <laughs> $7 million worth of anonymous money on TV against me right now. Tell lies, distorting the truth, and who's paying for it? Well, I don't know, but I have a feeling if Missourians knew who was paying for it, they'd be proud of me. They'd say, we like the enemies you made. <laughs> Those are the kind of enemies you ought to have when you go to Washington. These three candidates are all Tea Party candidates. One's been endorsed by the Freedom Express, which is the largest Tea Party organization. The second one endorsed by Freedom Works, uh, excuse me, by Tea Party Express, Freedom Works, and then the third one endorsed by none other than Michelle Bachman. <laughs> so we have Three candidates, all wanting to be the Tea Party candidate, all wanting to get the nomination. Now, I don't know about you, but I've seen a few things about Harry Truman around this office. And this is Harry Truman said, see. What do you think Harry Truman would think of the Tea Party? He get him out. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Truman would make Medicare a very important part of his presidency. Um, what do you think Harry Truman would say? I have a feeling he'd use words that I shouldn't use in mixed company. I know one thing for sure. If he thought his Senate seat was going to be turned over to the Tea Party, he would not be a happy Missourian. Because that is not what he thought government service was about. He thought it was about compromise. He thought it was about common sense. He thought it was about plain speaking. And by the way, he thought it was about having courage and not worrying so much about being popular all the time, but rather worrying about the people. And you know what? The people figured that out. And even though he wasn't supposed to win, he won. Because the people figured that out. Well, there's a lot of that in this election. Um, you know, this Affordable Care Act, they are telling lies like no tomorrow about that now. It's pretty simple and straightforward what the bill actually is. If you've got insurance now, it's your job, you, you're going to keep it. If you don't have insurance now and you'd like to get it, there's a place you're going to be able to go and buy it from private insurance companies without any government involvement whatsoever. All private insurance companies, you can buy it. That's all it is. Now, right now, we have mandated insurance coverage. You know where it is? The emergency room. If you decide you want to buy a new Harley instead of insurance, you buy your new Harley and you lay that Harley down the pavement and you have brain injury and guess what happens? You go to the emergency room and guess what happens? We take care of you. Now who pays that bill? We pay the bill through higher insurance rates. So we're already paying the bill for people who don't want to get insurance. So if we have a place that people can go and get it for a reasonable price, shouldn't they have to pay a penalty if they want to freeload off us? The last time I looked, it was the Republican Party that didn't like freeloaders. <laughs> and that's all this is. About 6% of the people is estimated will not get insurance even though they have a place they can get it at where they can afford it. And we want to make sure that those people are encouraged to get it because that makes it less expensive for everybody. Right. And that's the idea here, is to hold down the cost of health insurance for everybody. So don't let them spread this stuff. And next time you hear someone say, oh, you know, I'm not going to be able to get insurance at work anymore, say, that's a lie. It's just a lie. It's just not true. There's $143 billion in tax cuts in this bill. $143 billion in tax cuts. 
So it is, um, they're going to distort the truth about it, and it's our job to make sure people understand it. But more important, it's our job to make sure that everybody understands they're distracting us from what they want to do, which is privatize Medicare, privatize Social Security, and take away student loans. Those are the big three. I am really fortunate that all of you came out today. I know there's a lot of people here that are running. I know there's a lot of people who have held office and will held, hold office in the future. I know there's a lot of great working people here that know that uh, we can't have a race to the bottom. You know, all of my opponents were asked what the minimum wage was. You know what they said? They didn't know what the minimum wage was, but they knew it was too high. <laughs> <laughs> now, who thinks like that? How, how, uh, you know, it, it, we can't have a race to the bottom. We can't have a race to the bottom. We've got to have a middle class. This is about the middle class. This is about holding on to the middle class in America. That's what this race is about. I am really lucky you're here. I hope you'll help me. And we'll together, we'll deliver Cass County for the middle class. Got it? Got it. Yeah. All right.